Hello and welcome to Action Teacher Video. Video is a powerful tool that teachers are using to reflect on their own practice and to communicate new ideas. In this series, we feature videos produced by teachers themselves and discuss the contents and implications here in the studio. In this program, we'll be looking at an innovative approach to PSHE in Abbey Gates Primary School, captured on camera by teacher Darren Powell and called Body Image for Beginners. I'm delighted to be joined in the studio by Darren Powell. Darren, hello and welcome to the show. Hello. Joining Darren is another teacher with some similar experiences and concerns from Castlefield Infant School, Sarah Brigg. Hello, hello and welcome. I'm also delighted to introduce consultant and frequent contributor to Teachers TV, Adrian Jones. Hello. Firstly, Darren, I wonder if you could give me a bit of background to your project. Um, I've been interested in the subject of body image since I started teaching about seven years ago. And originally I was with a, an older age group, sort of 11 to 13 year olds. So this time I was interested to see how it related to a year five class. Fatty, you are about a twig. The Dalmatian. I just think people keep looking at me, I don't know why, but you just do. Ever since my first year of teaching, when I discovered that a girl in my class had an eating disorder, I've been much more aware of the concept of body image. That is, how you think you look, and how you think other people see you. So how did a class of Year 5 children think they looked? Fat. A bit. A nice bit, ugly. Just normal, really. Look, I look very freckly when the sun comes out. Average. What do you like about yourself? Um. Hmm. That one's gonna take a while. Um. Um. Hmm. My eyes and my body. I like my eyes. <laughs> well, I've always liked my hair. What don't you like about yourself? Hmm, that's an even easier one. Um, <laughs> I have to say, I don't, I don't like my face as much. Quite spotty. My freckles. Everything. I know it's a bit stupid, but I'd like to be a lot smaller. My eyes. Hmm. I'd like to maybe be a bit thinner. My belly. Because I think I look fat in everything. Through group discussions, the children wrote their own definitions of what it meant to be healthy, all sharing two key aspects. Well, saying really, watch what you eat and watch what you're doing with your body. I think pair share exercise enabled the F5s to think about body image, pair up with a friend to create questions about body image, and finally to share their questions in a circle. A confidential post box and a paper graffiti wall left outside during school time enable pupils to ask their own questions about body image and other body related issues. This empowered the children to take more responsibility for their own learning. We constructed whole class continuums to discover the major influences on body image. Friends were seen as being the greatest influence, but teachers also received a special mention. So I'd just say to the teachers, especially if you don't want to affect uh, people's way they see themselves, is just to watch what you say with them, because some, some people are more, more sensitive than others. Plays and songs were a useful way of showing how easily our body image can be affected. Why are you so skinny? You're like me. An important part of the topic was celebrating our uniqueness and in looking at characteristics passed on by parents. We also accentuated the positives about our personalities and expressed those positives to others. I like being friendly. I like the fact that I'll always have a go at something. I like my sense of humour. So after six weeks of learning about body image, 
Have attitudes changed? I didn't realise that people had troubles as well about what they look like. I have learned that it doesn't matter what size you are or how you look, it's what's it, it's important like what's inside you, so it doesn't matter about if you're fat or thin. I didn't like my body image because I thought I was dead fat. And now we've been writing, I mean, we've been learning about body image. I've written a, like, kind of diary or a note about what I like about myself and what I don't, and there seems to be more that I like about myself. I used to really, really hate my freckles, but I don't really care anymore. Why not? just want to be me and I want to be happy with me. Sean, what about you? I didn't like my eyes, but now I realise that everyone's different and it's, and it's good to be different, so I'm not really that, um, I don't, I, I'm not really that bothered anymore. I like my eyes. I like my personality more now. I think I'm quite funny at times, and I like it when I make people laugh. I like myself more now since I've been trying to put the positive side up. I actually feel better about myself now since I've learned about, about body image. Over a short space of time, there were some really positive changes in these children's body image. By delivering the social and emotional aspects of learning, we will begin to see far more children satisfied with who and what they are, feeling accepted by their peers, and being happy, healthy children. And isn't that what we're here for? I really loved that video. And you say it's body image for beginners, and they really are beginners to this concept, aren't they? How do colleagues and other adults see this project? Initially, uh, there were a few skeptics who thought maybe it might be a concept for an older age group, but I think in general people were very supportive of it because they knew it is an issue that needs to be dealt with. Do you think it's a bit young? I did, but I don't now. It, they spoke about it so well that you'd obviously help them understand what it was about. Um, but how did you introduce the idea of body image? Initially we just talked about you know, how we thought we looked and just shared ideas and I was really proud of the way that you know, the whole class were able just to say what was on their mind without feeling like they were going to be teased or uh, embarrassed by it. What kinds of things do you think affect children's perceptions of themselves? Well, originally, my own viewpoint was that it was largely going to be media-based because that's sort of you know, what we read mm. about and hear about is the effects of um, celebrities and models and that area. But from the children's own viewpoint, they found, or they thought that it was their friends. Their friends had the most influence of them by far. Do you find that also, Sarah, in your class, you're, you're nodding. Mm -hmm. I can see you're thinking of particular children. Perhaps this might be an interesting project to use in your classroom. Yeah, I think my children are obviously like a lot younger. They're only four and five years old. But although that we wouldn't use the term um, body image, I think we discuss these sorts of issues um, during circle time. And there are lots of opportunities to talk about um, things that are important to them, um, what makes them happy, what makes them sad, and a lot of the, the same issues really arise. It's a lot to do with peer groups and what their friends think about them and are they going to play with them at playtime. What don't you like about yourself? And that's an even easier one. Um, <laughs> I have to say, I don't, I don't like my face as much. Quite spotty. My freckles. Everything. Adrian, it's heartbreaking to see that. I was just thinking those children would have to feel very secure in order to be able to talk in that way, you know, trustingly. How did you build up their confidence? As a teacher, I've always thought that rapport was the number one priority. And so I think with that class, I've always had a very good rapport with the boys and girls, so it's been easy for me to talk to them and them to talk to me. And what kinds of activities did you do with them to support that? One that was shown in the video was the think, pair, share. So it's about getting an idea in your head and thinking about it by yourself and then sharing it to one other person and then maybe sharing it to the whole class. So just use, using gradual progressions. Mm -hmm. um, lots of role play, 
uh, drama, music, just to try and make some of the children that aren't usually keen to express things just by themselves to be sort of part of a group and be able to do it in a way that they feel comfortable with. And did the graffiti wall actually present anything that they hadn't actually wanted to articulate? Yeah, I think that was pro probably my favourite activity because firstly they thought it was something that was cool because they're always obviously told not to <laughs> write on walls so having the, the paper, wallpaper was really good. I like my eyes, I like my personality more now. I think I'm quite funny at times and I like it when I make people laugh. I like myself more now since I've been trying to put the positive side up. I actually feel better about myself now. A wonderful change in attitude there. Sarah, did you think that this was going to happen? Was it a surprise? No, it wasn't a surprise. There's obviously been a lot of work carried out prior to the filming um, and Darren's obviously worked hard to build up relationships with these children um, and they're obviously very confident to talk about themselves and their own body image in light of what they've learnt. Have you played that back to them? Yes, I did. And what, what, what were the responses as you thought they might be? I think a few were embarrassed at the start, just you know, seeing themselves on a big screen, but as soon as it finished they asked for me to play it again and again and again and they just loved seeing it, they loved hearing each other's viewpoints and I also think it was quite an effective way to finish off the unit mm -hmm. because they could suddenly see some children or some of their friends you know, explaining how bad it did make them feel at the start and how positive they feel now. How do you think children feeling more positive about themselves helps to support their learning? I think it just increases their self-confidence and with that self-confidence they're more willing to take risks, they're more willing to express themselves without fear of being shot down because of it and so overall I think with high self-esteem you know, they will become you know, better learners and more confident learners. Sarah, how do you feel you've learnt from that video? Would you be doing something with such young children in your class? Yeah, definitely. I'd obviously pursue um, some of those ideas, but obviously um, sharing this information with the older children within school and hopefully taking on something similar um, and working it through the school, starting with the little ones and building it up and introducing the terminology and exploring a little bit further. So in terms of your own professional development, what have you learnt? I think I've learnt a lot about where children's insecurities come from. I think I may, um, as a teacher we sometimes may have misconceptions about how children think, why they think certain things, um, why they have negative feelings about themselves or positive feelings. So from there I hope to be able to build up the children's self-image. Unfortunately I have to stop the discussion there. Of course you can find out more from our website at teachers.tv. Thank you to our teacher producer Darren Powell and to our guest Sarah Brigg and of course to Adrian Jones. Please join us again on Action Teacher Video and in the meantime from me, Xanthi Steen, goodbye.